What's going on guys? Welcome to Film Artsy. My name is Cole and about 10-20 minutes ago I just got back from seeing Captain Marvel. It was a pretty good movie and I recommend it highly. It's not as bad as the reviewers are saying. But before we get into the review, make sure you guys go check out the official Film Artsy Instagram at Film Artsy Official for more film news, memes, and updates. Now let's hop into the video. Agent Romanov, you miss me? Oh yeah, Charles, we got ourselves an excellent fan. Captain. Now guys, before we start this off, I want to say I highly had doubts that this movie would be good. This, I thought the movie would really blow because it was something different. Marvel was experimenting, but they knocked it out of the water. I kind of really enjoyed this movie a lot, and I think that you guys would too. It's not as bad as some of the reviewers are saying. I don't quite get where they're going with that. But there are some gripes with this movie, which I will talk about in the spoilers section of this discussion. But this discussion is going to be split up into three parts. There's going to be the part where I talk about everything. So there's going to be the review, the spoilers, and the ending explained. So let's hop into the review. This movie is what you would expect from Marvel. Action-packed and pretty funny. Now, if you guys are really turned off by the funny part, don't. It's not complete funny. It's serious at times as well. Another thing I would recommend is try and get a time where there's not a bunch of people in the theater. I know that might be hard because it's opening weekend, but I recommend it highly as it could ruin the experience for you and leave a sour taste in your mouth for movies such as this one. You really got to listen because in the theater I was in at least, the volume was kind of turned down on the vocals. Everything else was loud as can be, but the vocals were very quiet. The CGI was amazing. You could tell that they really mastered the CGI from the Marvel movies and every Marvel movie. Uh, I love the intro. The intro was amazing. Probably the best part. You guys will enjoy that a lot. I have a feeling. Another thing I really liked was the fact that it confuses you. It confuses you on purpose, and that's good. But if you guys are wanting to go see it, I suggest stopping this video right now, going watching it, as I will give this movie a 7 out of 10, which, in my eyes, that's actually pretty good. If you guys want, go watch it, enjoy it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video. If you guys want to stay for spoilers, then stay for spoilers. But the spoilers start in 3, 2, 1. Okay guys, so this movie is really good. In my eyes, I see Captain Marvel as a potential leader for the MCU, but I'm not quite sure now as a lot of things happened in this movie that made me think she wasn't really leader worthy. However, we'll get into that in a minute. Another thing I want to talk about before we start getting into more spoilers, and of course, this is still technically spoilers, but there's a lot of parts in the movie that just take everything that we know from the movies and retcon it. It's all gone. Well, not all gone, but you know what I mean. They take key parts of it, the Avengers universe and they say, what was that again? So basically what I'm saying is there a, there's a lot of continuity errors. One of these errors being that we all know what the Tesseract is, right? Well, if you don't, I'm going to put a picture of it on the screen. It's what Loki used to transport all of his army into the final battle for Avengers, which was really cool. However, in Captain America, the first Avenger, the Red Skull touches it and gets teleported. Yeah. However, Everyone in this movie seems to be able to touch the Tesseract with no repercussions. It doesn't burn them, it doesn't do anything, it doesn't teleport them, it doesn't send off any energy surges. Now, I don't know if this is because continuity errors or because they just, thought, they just thought Red Skull was the only one who touches it and teleports, or everyone else who touched it, no repercussions. I could have sworn in Avengers they had to keep it in a special box that didn't, like, melt. In this movie, they put it in a lunchbox and it was fine. Another thing I didn't like is in this movie, they called the Tesseract a power core. Now, I have no problem with them calling it a power core. But the problem I have is that no one in the movie called it a Tesseract. But then Captain Marvel's like, hey, grab the Tesseract. Did someone say that was a Tesseract? Did I miss something? I don't, I didn't hear one person say that was a Tesseract. My brother sitting next to me, my little brother who I took to the movie with me, did not hear one person say that that was a Tesseract. Now, this is obviously a continuity error, and it's not that horrible of a one. It just kind of 
mm, just nitpicked. I'm just nitpicking at that. That's the one thing I'm nitpicking at. One. Another thing, too, is she's really full of herself. Like, she's all-powerful, yes. Like, she's probably more powerful than we think. Like, at the end, she got all of her powers, and that's really cool. But she thinks she, she knows, like, she knows that she's the most powerful thing in the world. Like, she knows. With that, she doesn't show signs of being a leader in my eyes. And I don't know how the MCU can go forward making her a leader if she's just going to think she's the best, no one can out outdo her, she's never going to die, and all that stuff. Well, I don't know anymore with the MCU and Disney basically ripping this movie a new one because of that. However, whatever you think of Brie Larson and what she's done in the past, Captain Marvel's an amazing, amazing hero, and she played the hero very well. I could tell it was Captain Marvel. One thing that got under my skin a little bit is Captain Marvel. No, 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 not Captain Marvel, Captain Marvel. So Marvel is a character within the comics that tr that gives Captain Marvel her powers. And he is supposed to be a hero that is just well known on his planet. And in this movie they make Marvel not only a woman, and I have no problem with that. That's not an issue whatsoever. That's not what I'm saying. So before I get comments saying, "Hey, why are you hating on her if she's a woman?" and I'm I'm just saying right now I don't really care. That was actually pretty cool that they did that. One thing I don't like is that they made her a scientist stationed on Earth. It's not what Marvel was, but I guess they have to change comics somehow. Another thing I really liked about this movie was the intro. The intro was nothing but pleasing, as it was the Marvel intro, but all Stan Lee cameos. And it was amazing. It made me feel very proud to be a Marvel fan. And then we also get to see Stan Lee in the movie as well. He is he makes another cameo, which is pretty cool to see. We only get a couple more of those, so take them while we have them. Another thing I really liked about this movie was the synergy between Fury and Captain Marvel. You could tell that they really bonded as characters and as such it shows in the movie. Basically, you save my butt, I'll, I'll save yours. That's how it worked. Well, we also know how Nick Fury got his eye patch. This movie explains that. I don't know if that's how he got it in the comics. I'm not really read up on Nick Fury that much. However, the way he gets it in this movie is the cat. Oh, right, the cat. I need to talk about the cat before I do this. So this is a side note, the cat. The cat is not a cat. The cat is not a cat. The cat is this octopus thing and it's very highly deadly. Like, it swallows things whole. The cat, well, while they were being called something else and basically the scroll were scared of it whenever the cat would go near them. Fury didn't know this. Well, Fury's holding the cat and uh, they need to pick up the Tesseract. Now, what was weird is Captain Marvel's holding it. And he's like, and she's like, what, you want me to get you an oven mitt? And the cat, and he's like, no. He's like, I just don't want to touch that thing, right? The cat absorbs it with its tentacles and stuff like that, grabs it, puts it in its mouth. That's cool. Like, I don't know, and this goes back to the Tesseract thing that I was talking about. How come the cat can grab it and have no repercussion? Obviously, it's a space cat, but I mean, that doesn't, that shouldn't have anything to do with it. So going back to the eye patch thing. Well, the cat is in the ship with Fury, and Fury loves this cat. He's like in love with this thing. It's basically like his, jo his pride and joy. He's holding it up in the air like, oh, you're such a cute cat. And the cat scratches him in the eye. A couple scenes later, they're like, hey, how's your eye, eye doing? He's like, oh, it's fine. Getting better every time, every day. Right? Well, we cut back to where he's at with S.H.I.E.L.D. Side note, S.H.I.E.L.D. Did they ever call it S.H.I.E.L.D. in the original movies? I'm pretty sure in this movie. Yes. Can I speak to you for a moment? I'm, I'm not part of the press conference, but it's about to begin right now. I'm not a reporter. I'm Agent Phil Coulson with the Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. That's quite a mouthful. I know. We're working on it. You know, we've... we've... Yeah, I'm pretty sure in Thor, they didn't call it S.H.I.E.L.D. Pretty sure they called it like Coulson just said, right? Strategic Homeland Intervention Enforcement and Logistics Division. Here. They might have just done that because they didn't want to go back to saying that, but come on. Anyways, we find out that his eye patch is from that scratch, as Coulson makes a joke saying you got a lot of, you got a big decision to choose from, and he's looking at a bunch of eyeballs in a thing. Another thing too that's kinda cool and it ties the whole universe together is there is a jet, right? And it says uh Carol Danvers on it. But then it says Avenger. Carol Avenger Danvers is what it says on the jet. Well, he's writing something to try and find more people like Carol to make a team. In this scene, he says, I'm making a team. I am Iron Man. 
You think you're the only superhero in the world? Mr. Stark, you become part of a bigger universe. You just don't know it yet. Who the hell are you? Nick Fury, director of S.H.I.E.L.D. Oh. I'm here to talk to you about the Avenger Initiative. So basically, this is how he gets the name Avengers. But let's get to the ending. Let's explain that. So the ending. What? An ending. The ending was nuts. The ending was absolutely nuts. Basically, throughout the entire movie, she's a wimp. She basically, her powers are basically just proton blasts. And I'm like, okay, cool. How is she going to defeat Thanos? And I'm thinking in my head, how is she going to defeat Thanos if all she can do is proton blasts? Well, little did I know, at the end, she takes control of her powers and lights up like the 4th of July. She then goes and fights everyone in the ship that she is captured in. Unfortunately, Ronan makes an appearance. What does he do? He carpet bombs an entire planet. But Captain Marvel decides, oh, I'm, I'm Captain Marvel, flies up, destroys all of it, everything, gone. It's just boom, right? Flies down, and her trainer, which is played by Jude Law, who's Yanrog, he decides, turn off the light show, let's fight, let's see if you can actually fight me, then, you, then you'll know if you're ready to take control of your power, or whatever it is. And he gets ready to fight. Nope, just Proton Blast. He hits the rock, and then she drags him back to the ship that he arrived on Earth in, puts him in it, she types in the coordinates, tells him this. I'm I'm paraphrasing. Tell everyone you work for that I'm coming for them, and I'm going to undo everything. And boom, he's off to the races. He doesn't get going quite a, quite a bit. She shoots it, and I don't know how she knows she's an energy source and that that wouldn't destroy it, but she shoots it, and the ship goes. So, so we're going to skip a little bit, all right? We're going to skip a little bit. They're in the washing dishes. And Carol pulls out Nick Fury's pager and says, here you go. I made a few modifications. And he's like, oh, thank you. And she's like, for emergencies only. So basically, this right here will tie into Endgame and Infinity War when he pulls it out. Because it's an emergency. Everyone around him is disappearing in this scene. Everyone around him is disappearing. And he pushes the button. It drops on the floor. And uh, that's it. That's the ending. It's pretty impressive how they linked all this stuff together. Another thing I really liked about this movie was the music. And I'm all for that music. It was good. Nirvana was in it, and it was awesome. If you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys check out our next video, as we will be uploading a video about the post credit scenes and explaining how they link to Endgame. But if you guys enjoyed, make sure you guys hit that like button down below, subscribe for more, hit that notification bell to be notified when our videos go live, and we'll see you all in the next video. Bye, guys.